this is the second part of the planning for post-secondary school presentation. The first part was presented to grade 12 students in the fall. Uh, the topic of this presentation is how to fund uh, post-secondary education. In part one of the presentation last fall, we advised students to check their credits uh, to make sure they're meeting grad requirements, uh, to continue to explore secondary options, and also to look into deadlines for applications and awards, uh, and to consult with the institutions or with their guidance counselor, uh, or with the guidance website under post-secondary to uh, identify any of those deadlines. Most applications for post-secondary school are online. One of the places to look uh, for information on funding post-secondary school is the guidance website. If you go to the guidance website and click on post-secondary uh, and then on financial info, you'll come to two information links. The financial aid info link uh, just describes the different types of financial aid. And the scholarships and awards list, which many students have been visiting uh, this year already, uh, it provides an extensive list of uh, scholarships, awards, and bursaries um, that are offered uh, that students can apply to. We advise students to look at this list and pick and choose the uh, awards that they believe would apply to them uh, and make application. When you're looking at the costs of uh, post-secondary education, you have to think about some of the following expenses. So there's tuition fees uh, and additional fees, other fees that cover activities, um, athletic centers, health insurance, and so on. Uh, you also have to pay for books and supplies, and it's a good idea to look into used books as much as possible. Room and board and rent transportation costs. Especially if you're traveling very far away for school, you have to factor in uh, possibly uh, uh, airline tickets, train tickets, and so on. The cost of anything else that you want to do. And if you want to go out and socialize, go see a movie, hang out with friends, those are going to be all additional expenses that you have to budget for. Take all of those costs and multiply them by the number of years of your program. We'll just pause the presentation at this moment. Um, the teacher can take questions from students and those questions will be passed on to the guidance department. So when paying for post-secondary school, there's a variety of options. The first one being student savings. Uh, awards, which I mentioned earlier, uh, through scholarships and bursaries. Uh, there's also the student's employment income, uh, either working through the summers or throughout the school year while you're attending uh, university or college. Of course, there's student loans, which we'll say a little more about later. Uh, RESPs and other investments. RESPs stand for a Registered Education Savings Plan. And RESPs and other investments are items that you want to talk with your family about. And lastly, there's also uh, support from your family who can help you pay for your post-secondary education if it's possible. Regarding awards, um, everyone who's going on to post-secondary school really should apply for an award. Not all awards are based solely on marks. Some awards look at the athletics, others look at community service. So it's well worth your time to take a look at all the awards that are available to you. Some awards are local awards, which are provided by service clubs, foundations, and businesses. Um, there's also the Millwood Awards, which you may have heard of, which uh, is an opportunity to apply for several local awards with one application. We've included a Millwood High Awards application with the PowerPoint presentation that goes with this presentation for you today. So if you could fill that out if you're interested and get it in to the guidance office as soon as possible. There's also private scholarships. Private scholarships uh, are provided by employers and unions uh, to dependents of employees or to the employees themselves. So if you have a part-time job, 
the company you work for may offer such scholarships, so it's well worth your time to ask. There's also grants for special populations, such as African Nova Scotian students, First Nations students, or even students with physical or learning challenges. The military will also provide funding for post-secondary education. If you're a member of the reserves, you're eligible for scholarships for university and community college. And there's education training plans if you join the military as a full-time member, um, such as the Royal Officer Training Program, or ROTP, or the Continuing Education Officer Training Program, uh, or the Coast Guard College. For the ROTP and CEOTP, uh, you can visit the link that's listed here uh, for theforces.ca and uh, look under paid education and it will describe all those options for you. Additionally, there are entrance scholarships at many or most institutions and you automatically apply for these entrance scholarships when you apply to attend the institution. We'll pause again for questions. So another way to pay for school uh, is through student loans, and it's probably the most common way. Uh, there are two types of loans, government loans and private loans. Government student loans are administered by the Nova Scotia Department of Education, and in order to apply for those, you have to go to their website. They determine the eligibility. Now, contrary to popular belief, there's no family income cap that disqualifies any student from receiving student loans. One of the benefits of a government student loan is that you don't have to repay it right away uh, and there's no interest until after your studies have been completed. Currently, a portion of the loan may be remitted, which means it does not have to be repaid if good marks are obtained. So if you have very high marks, they'll actually allow you uh, to remit a greater portion of your loan. When you apply, the application is usually updated on the studentloans.ednet.ns.ca website around late April. The other loan option is a private student loan, and they're provided by financial institutions like banks. They're based on a student budget and on having a co-signer with an acceptable credit rating. Now, this is usually apparent. It doesn't have to be apparent, but what a co-signer does is they're willing to accept the responsibility if a student defaults on a loan. When you take out a private loan, you draw funds as necessary, and it works like a credit card. So you want to be careful what you're spending your money on because you have to pay interest on that amount every month, which is different from the government loan. So on a private loan, you have to pay regular interest, and you don't have to pay on the principal amount until after your studies end, but it is advisable to make regular payments as often as possible. Apply for these loans anytime. Again, we'll pause for questions. So in conclusion, confirm that you're a potential grad. If you haven't looked at post-secondary options, you should do so right away. Visit your guidance counselor for career help and help with applying for uh, loans or for bursaries or scholarships or even for post-secondary school. And remember that there's a lot of options for financing. So if you want to have a look at our website again to get more detailed information, please do so.